How's it going guys, Kels Prime here and today Bioware decided to perform a AMA. Though I was not available to take part in the AMA for the most part, I have gone through every question and picked out the most relevant ones and the ones that have yet to be asked or the questions that have been burning for a long time and we finally have answers. With that said, I'm currently doing a giveaway for a digital version of Anthem. If you want to be in with a chance of winning this, click on the link in the description below to enter. Simple as that. Good luck and time to get into some serious AMA. So one of the most prophesized questions in Anthem is Endgame. Raids. What is it? What will it entail? And when will it come? When will it be available? And what is it? And well, many people have suggested it's the Shape of Storms or the newly announced Cataclysm, but we finally have some direction as to what this inspirational raid content that Bioware keeps mentioning will be. So let's head over to the AMA. Kim asks, Players are very concerned about the complexity of the Cataclysms and if they are anywhere near on par with endgame raid content from other games. Can you please describe them in further detail? Ben Irving responded, we want them to be inspirational, meaningful, challenging, requiring high levels of coordination and a place to earn the best rewards in Anthem. More on that later. This was also followed up with Tenek127 asking a similar question, will Anthem ever have raids, 6-8 player missions? Again, Ben Irving responded with, we believe in the need for inspirational content, our cataclysms represent this. So cataclysms will be the raid type inspirational content. Whether it's going to require more than 4 players is to be seen. However, Bioware have insisted that they do not want to break the 4 player formula. So I would assume at this point that 4 players will be the maximum required for the raid type content. So if you're planning on getting ready for this, get your free set of friends and you're good to go. Start gearing up when the game comes out and go for broke. Because it does seem Cataclysms, which will be coming in March, will be the end game raid content. Yes, you heard that right, it is coming in March with the new Act 1 DLC update, which is free. Just because I've said DLC doesn't mean it's paid for, it's free. Calm down, calm down. So now that we know what raid type content, raid type aspirational content will be, and it's been cut, and it's almost been confirmed I'd say that it is now Cataclysms and we won't be expecting anything else. Although I did see a tweet later on asking if there is going to be a raid and they did say more on this later and so we now know that cataclysms will be pretty much what anthem wants the endgame content to be what they will be and what they will involve is yet to be seen hopefully we'll get some news soon it is coming out in march but moving on from that there were a ton of questions that were actually really really awesome like this one will some bosses have unique drops not at launch was the response, but we are looking into this. Though the loot pool is the same in every content, they are looking at boss specific loot. Whether this will turn into stronghold specific loot or other forms of specific loot is yet to be seen, but the fact that this is now in their mindset because people want it is great, so it gives you that bit more of an incentive to go farm for that weapon that you actually want rather than chasing for it in a pool that may never drop. I mean, in the demo, I never got at all, no matter how many times I went out into free play, no matter how many times I did the stronghold, the firewall mortar. It just didn't drop. But if there was a specific place of getting it, it would have increased my chances. Of course, this is a bad example, but you get the point. Next up, primers and detonators were on the chopping block. With primers and detonators being so powerful, what incentives do players have of using abilities that do not fall into one of these categories? Ben Irving said they do more damage than a detonator or a primer that doesn't combo. It's all a personal choice based on how you play, your team makeup and the difficulty of the content. Now, what he's saying here is if you go in and you prime detonate, you're overall doing more damage based on the combo effect. However, your primer and detonator itself are not doing the bulk of the damage. It's the actual combo. However, if you are in a group that doesn't like to combo or they're just not very good at it, if you went with double high damage abilities, you would still be doing close enough damage, if not more, because you wouldn't be failing the combos. So it's a playstyle thing. If you want to go full on damage, you can. But if you want to synergize with your other javelin friends, 
you also have that option. This next one by Renee Klein is pretty amazing question and it would have been something that I would have asked. Will there be elemental weapons or bullets? So as of right now people are complaining that the guns are pretty weak and redundant because it's pretty much an abilities game. If something like this was to happen, it would be a game changer and it would bring guns back in in a big way. Ben Irving said, sorry guys, not at launch. We want primers and detonators to be gear focused. We may add weapons that do elemental damage and don't cause combos, however, so I guess I just talked myself into saying yes. Yes, there will be in time. So here you have it guys, elemental weapons and bullets is now a confirmed thing coming to Anthem at a later date near you. It's going to be pretty awesome and it will broaden the way the game actually plays. It won't combo, but the fact that it will do elemental damage means it will shred the shields and that is what is important. So this notion alone has me psyched and excited. Stop Grabbits now asked, will you make sure that a meta doesn't appear in terms of which weapons are the strongest? Give a ton of really well balanced options for endgame. Not all of us want to run snipers and get the best DPS. The response was, this is our goal. Balance changes will be forever. Now I did put forward a question asking them how often we can expect balance changes or sandbox changes to come to the world of Anthem. I did miss the window of the AMA so I didn't get a response but if they do respond I'll retweet it so you can check it out there and I'll also add it into the next video if I do get a response. But it would be nice to see how often they can actually do sandbox changes if and when it's needed. Right, on to some more cool stuff. Are the Javelin startup animations going to have an option not to be skipped when going into an expedition? I love these scenes and it sucks to have them interrupted by the mission loading screen. Mark the raw response, we are looking into this. So it does seem like it's actually a bug that it's cutting it out and not intentional. So I fully agree, it does look awesome when the Javelins are booting up and getting ready to set out. So hopefully we get to see this. It's only a few seconds and it does look really, really cool. This one is pretty amazing. From Seketh, can we get a mass salvage option where we can mark items and salvage them in bulk? The response is yes, through the vault. This is actually a feature that's already in the game. So that is amazing. You don't have to go through your vault and break stuff one by one like you currently have to do in the Division 2. And if that's not the case, if someone could damn tell me how to do it, that would be great because I can't figure out how to mass break everything that I want to break in the beta. It's all one by one and it is bloody frustrating. Right, on to the next question. Are there any plans for a companion app that would allow us to read the lore and customize our javelins away from the game? The simple answer to that is no companion app at launch. They're not rolling it out, but for launch there will not be a companion app. And it is a shame because I'd love to be able to get involved and invest more time in the game, especially when I'm out and about at work or on the train or something like this. It would be great for me to be able to take out my phone, log into the app and just dive into the lore and just read about the history of Anthem, read about the history of Fort Tarsus, Helena Tarsus and so forth. This sort of thing is amazing and it would have been great, but they haven't ruled it out. It is something for the future, at least for now. Travis asks, what type of cosmetics will we be able to look forward to? Just emotes or armor and vinyls too? Or maybe other stuff? Dara responded with armors, emotes, banners, vinyls, and hopefully more things as we bring the tech online. So expect more creative things to come along. Who knows? Maybe we can get a full armor buster suit, right? A full armor Hulk buster. Now that would be awesome. Come on, Disney, Bioware, EA, do that collaboration. It's going to make gold. Just do it. And this leads me on to the next question. Grunt asks, will you be adding an Iron Man armor just for kicks and giggles? Because we all know that the Ranger is pretty much Iron Man, right? And Mark Dara confirms this would require a conversation with Disney. So have that conversation. There's money to be made. I know some people will go out and earn it and that's fine, but there's money to be made here and I for one would go and buy the Hulkbuster skin instantly it was available. Period. My Colossus needs it. Benjamin asks, will there be a photo mode? Not a launch, but it is a widely requested feature and I've seen this being plastered around a lot. It is something they want to do. However, they're worried at the way of implementing it because you can't pause the game in Anthem and this is their biggest concern right now in trying to get the right balance, the right fit 
the right situations. It may be that it's only available in free play where it doesn't really matter what you're doing, but in strongholds, I can see this becoming problematic if you're fighting a boss and someone goes, hey guys, one second, I'm just gonna get into photo mode and take a really cool shot of this. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Matteo something asks, how much of pilot customization is there at launch? Will we be able to change hairstyle, color, or even adjust our pilot's appearance, such as nose, eyes, mouth, ears, etc.? The response to this was we have focused our personalization efforts on the javelin. For pilot, you will pick a pre-generated head from a list. So the pilot customization will be pretty basic based on this, but to be fair, you hardly ever see your pilot from what we've seen so far, and the javelin is the primary focus. Would we be able to change the colors of the thrusters? Not at launch, we do really want to add this, so this is something that will probably come in with the March update or the following update from then, but I would expect this to be something that will be added with the quality of life updates in March. So do look forward to it, because this kind of does sound cool, I would love a red flame coming out from my thrusters as I boost along. Toxic Craver asks, will we be able to set visible waypoints so that you don't have to stop every 10 seconds to make sure you are headed the right way in free play. And believe me, this is very, very annoying and frustrating and it's a bigger issue than people want to admit. If you stray too far from your friend, it doesn't appear on the compass, then you're having to go into the map to fly along and then you have to check again to make sure you're flying in the right direction. Then you're checking again to see how close you are. It's annoying and frustrating and something that could easily be fixed with a waymark. Mark Dara responded with, I'm signing Ben up to do this after launch right now. So again, expect this to be part of the March update. This next one by Flying Gecko is a really, really good question and one that I do hope one day we will see. Will guilds have a social space of their own? And if they do, will the hub be influenced by any faction, sentinels, freelancers, etc? Ben Irving responded with, this is unlikely to come with the launch of guilds. It's an interesting idea though. And I do hope enough people can get behind this notion. I really hope enough people can support this because your guild having its own social place could be pretty damn awesome and from there they can actually build that expand upon that feature something that wasn't ever intended but could actually expand and become something great and a great addition to anthem so i would implore everyone to get behind this idea get behind this notion and hopefully we can see it soon rather than later don't expect it for march probably in act two or three but even then, this is an amazing question and I do like the response and the fact that Ben Irving is actually open to the idea. He finds it interesting and it could be cool as far as he's concerned. So if they can get the logistics right and get the server capacity right, this could be a really, really cool feature. So the next question we have is by SkillUp. Yes, the actual SkillUp and he's on the MTX bandwagon yet again. How much will cosmetics cost at launch? and how many hours would it take to earn those cosmetics if we were to grind for them? Mike Dara responds, we are constantly adjusting the balance of our economy. We want to ensure that you can earn things in-game in a reasonable amount of time. And honestly, something like this is going to be worked on until the last second. Considering the MTX store is separate to the game, separate to the way it actually functions, this can be adjusted all the way to the last second. How do I know this? Because I know people that work in the industry and they do the same. It's a common practice in the games industry. They adjust things until the last second and they see how it goes. If no one buys it, then they adjust the prices again. If no one buys it, then they adjust the prices again until people do start buying it. Once they start buying it, then they reassess. This is how it works. I think uh, the MTX bandwagon hate with Anthem kind of needs to be cooled off now because simply put, it's kind of getting sad. They're giving you free DLC, free updates, free content. What more do people want? If we don't pay for microtransactions, we don't get free stuff. So it's one of two things. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't like microtransactions, but the model that Anthem is going for, I don't mind investing in a bit because I'm getting free content. Even if it is spending up to £60 worth of cosmetics, that's what I would normally pay for the expansion, right? I'm fine with that. So I, I don't see the problem here. And people just really need to just call it with the EA hate. If they start charging 20, 30, 40 pound for a skin, yeah, then it can be a problem because it's, it's a 60 pound game. 20 pound for a skin is a bit much. But 
they're not doing that as of right now they've debunked that picture we don't know for sure how much you're getting for one pound for shards there is no information there is no legit confirmation all of it is hearsay and hopefully once the game comes out we can finally see and if they are trying to rip people off then fine go and do what the hell you like but until then call it off guys Bancroft asks i want more activities in the open world more various activities like treasure hunts races or things like that there are response we will be adding new activities and things to do over time races would be cool and yes it damn would streamer alert asks when do you think the pvp system will be in the game no pvp at launch is the current statement my stance on this i don't mind pvp if it's done right i don't want it to affect anything in the world of the pve anthem i don't want it to be part of pve anthem i want it to be a complete separate entity to pve in anthem anything that we get and gain in pve will not be relevant in pvp pvp should be arena based it should have set loadouts for people to choose from and if they want to add weekly coin or weekly objectives to do in there they can as long as it's separate and the balancing of the pvp is completely on a separate branch to pve i'm okay with this if at any point they decide to balance pvp with pve i am 100 percent against this after the colossal fuck up that is destiny 2 and it's pvp i don't ever want to see a company making that much of a colossal fuck up and i do feel really strongly about this because i loved destiny but the way bungie have gone they have completely and utterly destroyed that game by focusing everything on pvp and i really hope bioware with anthem do not go in this direction if they want to make it arena based completely isolated in its own little housing away from pve i am all for it because this could be a really really good mode especially during the downtime and the content droughts we need something after all but if they want to balance it with the two hell no absolutely not i am totally against it 100 percent. i will be at the forefront with you guys for that i do feel really strongly about this Corey asks, will there be a spectator cam on launch so we don't have to stare at a big red revive screen? The Ra says, probably not for launch, but we are looking into this. And what Corey is meaning here is the fact that if you go down and your teammates don't revive you, there is no way for you to come back. What you need to do is hard shut the game down, relaunch the game, and then rejoin the instance when the game prompts you to. That way, you come back and you're alive again. It's a really, really bad design. It's a really, really shitty thing that was probably missed during the q and I'm not sure how this was missed or why it was missed or whether they believed it wouldn't be a problem. But if the VIP demo and the open demo have shown me anything, this is a serious problem. The widget will help that to some extent because that wasn't there in the demo and you didn't know when your teammates were down. So at least with the widget there, there will be an indication. So hopefully this will greatly minimize. But if people just don't want to sit around and do stuff, they're just going to run ahead. And the only option you have at that point is to rejoin by hard shutting down the game. With that said though, if you do that and you rejoin the instance, all the XP you gained and all the bonuses that you gained up to that point you get to keep and once you complete the dungeon or complete the event you get all the rewards so it's inconvenient yes but hopefully after launch take a look into this and find a better solution and that better solution pretty much if you ask me is that maybe a 90 second timer if no one's revived you after 90 seconds you simply revive yourself once you're out of a no respawn zone done simple as that next question is do missions quests require public matchmaking or can i do the story completely solo mark the raw response with story missions can be done solo which is pretty awesome for you solo players out there but just remember free play and strongholds are forced matchmaking derek romine pretty much confirms that he's been playing destiny with this next question because it is a pain in the ass what if i miss stuff on the roadmap Will I miss out forever or will the missions and events stay in some character's head that I can talk to at the fort? Ben Irving responds, some things will only be available at the time. They may come back around later. So I assume these are like Halloween events and Christmas events, Valentine events, things like this that will basically be seasonal events and other things will be permanently available like strongholds and other things. The big question right now is cataclysms. Bioware have said that it's pretty much a timed event, it won't be a consistent event, so whether 
this will be something that can be missed or not missed is a big red flag and one that I hope they can clarify a bit more going forward. And that's pretty much all the questions that I found relevant in the AMA. There were some really, really good questions in there. We finally got clarification on aspirational content being cataclysms. We finally have some idea of what the raid type content will be. So that's pretty cool. Now we just need to see it, right? We just need to see what it will entail and what it will look like and what it will involve. And when they say it's going to require top end communication, it will be interesting to see if this is accessible to matchmaking players as well as those that are preformed, because that is the concern right now. The community doesn't want these contents being available for the top 10%, but rather it being available to everyone and accessible to everyone. Now, obviously, by the way, I won't come out and say that this is only available for the 10%, but hopefully in time, once they start revealing more, we can see more. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to share. Until the next video, Remain legend.